I eyeballed that pretty hard and it's not really straight, so fuck it, let's do it. So today we're going to be doing some planning for the drop top. Now I have slowly collected a bunch of parts. I still have a lot of parts to get, but I don't really have like a formal list, a way that I can check off the parts. So that's basically what we're going to be doing today. I got a fancy whiteboard and we're going to write down basically every component that I need to get the drop top, my hunk of junk at the garage back up and running. So we're going to be doing that and we're also going to be Routing off the ones that I have and sort of checking them off, creating a checklist. Because I think if I make a list of parts I don't have, then it's going to make me feel worse if I can have some stuff scratched off already, then I'll feel better about the whole thing. So this is going to be me basically explaining all of the components of the engine build that I'm going to be making for the car. So there's going to be a lot of talking, a lot of explaining, and you guys are going to be able to see how in-depth and how nice I'm going to build this motor. I'm going to build it properly, and you guys will be able to see that just from the components list. So let's start writing. This car is never gonna run, ever. <laughs> There's so much stuff. All right, so that is a complete list. We're gonna go through it in a sec. Disregard my horrible writing. I suck at writing on whiteboards because I write with my left hand, so it kinda, it gets ugly. So let's start at the top, block. Now that's probably going to be one of the last things I get simply because I want to get a complete M52, do a full teardown on it. So I know the block hasn't been sitting around for a while getting rusted, you know. I want it to be all packaged up nice so nothing can get inside and there's going to be less rust and stuff like that. I'm not going to be using the block that I currently have in it because I want to run turbo with this and keep it at a 3.2. Over boring that block that I have now would weaken the cylinders for boost. Um, 3.2s already, according to some people, don't handle boost very well because the cylinder walls are thinner because it's honed out more, it's bored out more. And I would want the cylinder walls as thick as they could possibly be for it being a 3.2. So I don't want to overboard the block that's currently in there, so we're going to get a new one. Pistons, rings, and pins should come with it. Rods, and the rods I'm looking at are Eagle rods, and they come with ARP bolts, so that's sick. Machine work, getting it decked. Uh, minimum finish, 50 RA for the MLS head gasket to seal perfectly. The timing cover is going to go in with that. I'm going to overbore it because it's probably going to be a 2.8 block. We're going to bore it a 3.2. Hone that. Line hone the main journals uh, so they're aligned better. I'm going to get the wrist pin installed at the machine shop. They're probably going to have to press them in. I don't have a press. Along with some crank work, I might get my crank polished. And the oil pan fitted for an oil return is probably going to happen in this stage too. So that'll be after I get the block and after I get all this stuff. So that's what's going to happen there. I need a set of main bearings, rod bearings, and main bolts. So the main bolts, the rod bolts, and the head bolts are all ARP hardware, so that's going to be fun to retorque those once they're on. I'm going to get the main bearings and rod bearings after the machine work is done. We'll do all of the measurements when I get everything back from the machine shop so I don't buy bearings beforehand and get them in the wrong size and I have to send it back and wait. So once we get that all back from the machine shop, then we're going to spec the bearings and order the bearings. So once I get the machine work done, it's probably gonna be like two or three weeks before we get the bearings and actually start installing it. Bottom end gasket kit, that's gonna have the oil filter housing gasket, the timing cover gasket, the oil pan gasket, the oil pump gasket, the rear main seal and front main seal, the rear main seal housing gasket. I'm probably forgetting some other gaskets, but it has an ass load of gaskets. Gonna get a new oil pump, gonna get a oil pump nut, gonna get a new oil pump chain. Lower timing chain, upper timing chain. I'm just gonna get all brand new chains because old chains are worn and I don't want that. Lower timing guide. So these are old and cracked because they're old plastics. So we're gonna get new ones. Upper timing guide actually broke in half when I was pulling it apart. For some reason, it's just old plastic. Oil gallery plugs and freeze plugs. So with the block I'm getting, I'm gonna be taking out the oil gallery and the freeze plugs and I'm gonna do a completely thorough clean inside and out on that block. It's gonna be meticulous. So we're gonna get new gallery and freeze plugs to top that off to make sure everything's super clean and nice. Head gasket, I have an MLS head gasket and I have ARP head bolts. A lot of the stuff on here I already have. We're just gonna go through the list. New thermostat, new thermostat housing, new water pump, upper and lower hoses and a Z3M radiator. So in addition to building the engine, I'm also gonna be rebuilding the entire front end of the cooling system just to make sure that the brand new engine has a brand new cooling system with brand new coolant 
just make sure I don't want to chance it on risking running old shit with this motor just to, you know, have it be issues, I guess. Or have it cause issues, I should say. I rebuilt the cooling system in this car about two years ago, so they're kind of not new anymore, so I'm just going to get new ones. Uh, so the radiator I do have right now, we're probably going to retrofit into the E30 build, which will be sick. And I'm going to get another fan shroud because my first fan exploded because the, the engine mounts were bad and it shattered some of it. So I'm going to get a new fan shroud, modify it to fit the Z3M radiator, and send it. Exhaust manifold studs and nuts. If any of you guys have ever pulled off exhaust manifolds off of these motors, they are kind of a pain in the ass. Sometimes the stud will stay with the nut, sometimes the nut comes off, sometimes it just doesn't come off smoothly. Because I'm going to be pulling it off and running a turbo manifold, I want that hardware to be perfectly brand new so I have a full set of manifold studs and nuts that are going to go on. It's going to be sick. Along with that, exhaust manifold gaskets and mid pipe to manifold gaskets. I also need to get one new header because the impact that I used to pull it off ripped the stud out with it. I got one new header or one used header from uh, Evan over at Throttle when we did the, uh, the Throttle E36 turbo build. He let me keep one of them because the other one had the same issue, the uh, stud broke off. But I don't even know if it's the one I need. So I have three headers, two of them are the same, one of them I need. Hopefully it's the right one so I don't need to add an exhaust manifold to this list. So main serpentine belt and AC belt. I have brand new continental belts for that. That'll be nice. Belt tensioner pulley, belt tensioner piston, and idler pulley. So these are just a bunch of little stuff that's going to go on and just, just make it like that much cleaner. You know, brand new parts. Spark plugs and oil filter. I should add oil and coolant to this list. There we go. So I'm going to be running uh, brand new plugs. You guys know I like to run the UP NGK, so I got a bunch of those. No filter, I have a new one. Coolant drain plug, I got one. A lightweight flywheel. So, the clutch setup that's going to be on this because we're going to be running boost is going to be an E34 M5 clutch kit with a lightweight flywheel. I'm looking at the uh, ECS one right now. I need hardware for it. I need the E34 M5 clutch kit and hardware for that. That hardware should come with the flywheel and come with the clutch. So I'm not too worried about getting that. Throw out bearing and pilot bearing. I did the manual swap on the convertible like three years ago at this point. So when I did that, I used brand new parts. But again, just having new parts, they're only a couple bucks to throw them in. It'll make it just, just it'll be just that much better. ZF shift linkage. I need one of those. For the auto to manual conversion on Little Wing, I tried to use a Getrag uh, shifter linkage to throw that in. It didn't end up working because the ZF linkage is shorter because the transmission is longer. So what I ended up doing, if you guys didn't watch, was I snagged the shift linkage and short shift kit out of the convertible to make it work. So I need to get a new one of those. I want to get a Z3M short shift kit for it and a DSSR rod. I already have the DSSR rod because I bought it for Little Wing and didn't use it. I'm going to get a new shift carrier bushing that sits up under the frame there. A shifter rod joint. So I picked up a ZF transmission a while back to put it in this car to get it this car because I snagged it uh, for a little wing for the manual swap. The transmission that I bought didn't come with that little shifter rod joint so I need to get a new one. It also didn't come with a flex disc which is sick. I snagged the drive shaft from the convertible for a little wings manual swap so I need a new drive shaft and hardware. I don't have the hardware to put the flex disc or the drive shaft together. I do have hardware for the drive shaft to the differential and the center support bearing hardware I have. The ZF transmission, I got that. I don't have the hardware for it. I need a new reverse light switch because the one on the transmission I bought is kind of bunk. I get a set of poly engine mounts for this. I also want to get two sets. So I want to get a set for the drop top and a set for the sedan. M52 manifold. Yes, I have an M50 manifold and the conversion kit currently set up for the car and I had it on the car before the car broke. That being said, I do have to get this thing smogged to get it registered to get it back on the road. And I'm basically going to be putting the motor back to full factory or as close to factory as I can. So M52 manifold is part of that. 
uh, full factory intake system including the uh, air box is going to be factory the full exhaust system I'm not going to be running an oil cooler initially so basically just set the motor to complete factory as factory as I can to try to get it to pass smog also it's probably going to be a little bit better for the break in for it from there then we'll throw the M50 manifold back on we'll throw the oil cooler back on and go from there oil pan fitted for oil return that's going to happen with the machine work over there Got oil, got coolant, a couple things added to the list I forgot to add are the crank position sensor. I got a brand new cam position sensor for it a while ago, so I'm going to get a brand new crank position sensor to polish it off. I want to get a new coolant temp sensor because that little sensor is old and a brand new one will be nice. Those do a lot more than just read the uh, temperature of the coolant. They fuck with the DME, they make it turn to closed loop, all that stuff. I need to get some vacuum line for it because I stole it for the brake bleed setup for the manual swap. So I cut some of the vacuum lines in there. So I need to get some new vacuum lines and a crank bolt, otherwise known as a Jesus bolt. Those are one time use bolts that hold the front crank pulley on. So and they're torque to yield. So I do need to get a new one. I also need to get a new one for the M50 before we button that thing all back up. So that's the main list to get the motor going. A lot of it's uh, short block parts and drivetrain parts. Some additional stuff that I do need to get the car like complete, but these aren't the completely necessary items are half shafts, uh, rear CVs. One of them started to click indicating that it was worn and no more grease in it. I'm not gonna pack the ones that are in it. I'll probably get a new set shortly after the car starts driving again. I do need to get some that are good for a thousand horsepower anyways at some point, so I think I'm gonna try and get those sooner rather than later once the car starts running. Corner trim and middle trim, that is for the front bumper right there. I stole it off of the convertible for the sedan. If you guys remember a while back, I was going to a meet down in LA and I hit a tire and it just totally ripped my front end apart on the uh, sedan. So I stole the front trim pieces from the convertible. So I gotta get new ones. Fog light delete panels. It had fog lights on it, but one of them fell out and shattered. So I'm just gonna get a set of delete panels for it. Kidney grills because someone backed into me and fucked my kidney grills. They also fucked my nose panel and fucked my hood. So I need to get all of that, that'll be fun. And my front right fender is fucked because some kid, some asshole kid, pushed a shopping cart into it, bounced it off, and kicked the whole front end. And I was freaking 100 feet away watching him do it. It really pissed me off. So these are not really like super big priority because I'll need to find some good ones and get them paint matched. That's gonna be a little bit pricey. So that'll happen down the road at some point. So again, this is just the list for the short block and the drivetrain to get the whole car running again. It is gonna be a turbo car. This is just the list to get the car back on the road and prep for a turbo. There's no exhaust manifold. There's no turbo intercooler, none of that stuff. The ejectors tune, none of that stuff is on here. That will be a separate list after we get the car running and drivable again. Then we'll start doing turbo stuff with it. Oh, that's a pretty sizable list. And I do have some of the parts here, so we're gonna go through the parts that I do have and then mark it off a list so I'm not staring at a completely full list of shit that I don't have. To start, a new front center trim piece. And we are going to mark them off with red stars. This is the other front trim piece. This is the corner trim piece. Mark that guy. I got my fog light deletes, mark that off. Oh yeah, no kidney grills. This is a belt tensioner pulley. Belt tensioner pulley. This is a full bottom end gasket set, very nice. There are the oil gallery plugs. These guys are actually pretty little. I won't lie. Gallery plugs. I got some freeze plugs. I should have seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Brand new freeze plugs. Very nice. Freeze plugs. Got some laser platinum spark plugs. These are the uh, UP plugs for those of you guys wondering. I will need to get different ones. I need to get some colder heat range ones when we get turbo, but these will be fine for the initial. Exhaust manifold studs and exhaust manifold nuts are in here too. So those will be nice for the new uh, turbo manifold when I get to that. This is a 
block drain plug for the coolant. I don't know if I wrote that down on here. Coolant drain plug, I did. Mark that off, all right. That is an oil pump nut, and it's got a nice little wire on it with a hole through it. So that'll go on the new oil pump. And that with some Loctite should keep this guy, prevent it from backing it off under uh, load. So I've heard that's a problem with E36s. I've heard it's only an issue if you really beat on yours hard and I do plan on running this motor. Not insanely hard, but I do plan on pushing it and that's just basically insurance. Oil pump nut. This is a chain. What chain is this? That's the upper timing chain. This is the main timing chain. So that's the oil pump chain. That's the upper timing chain. That's the main timing chain. Good. Oil pump chain, lower timing chain, upper timing chain. Nice. This is the upper timing guide. So that'll be up on the cylinder head. Upper timing guide. That's a horrible star. These are the lower timing guides. So that is what the tensioner pushes on on the cylinder head timing guide. We got the AC belt and the main serpentine belt. Beautiful. Main serp belt, AC belt. This is the idler pulley. That's what that is. Brand new thermostat and gasket. Slick. Thermostat. I believe this is the thermostat housing. Full aluminum. No issues. Knock that off the list. Got a water pump. Full aluminum. I don't want to see you guys out there fucking with plastic water pumps and plastic thermostat housings, alright? Fuck that shit. This is the belt tensioner piston. Sick. Last but not least, we got the ARP head bolts. And a Cometic MLS head gasket. I also got an oil filter too. So I have some of the list checked off. I'd say between a quarter and a third. So that's a start. Now a lot of the things that are not on here I already have done, so it's not as bad as it looks. The top end is completely finished, the cylinder head is done. It's got new valve guides, new valve seats, all cleaned, fresh decked, all that stuff. The only thing I might have to do to it is I gotta call the machine shop that I used and check their RA rating for the cylinder head decking machine. It needs to be at least 50 RA to run that MLS gasket. I don't know if they run 50 RA, so there's a chance. I might need to send that in, cut a 50 RA on it just to get the MLS head gasket to seal properly. But aside from that, this is like the starting point. So obviously there's still a lot of things that I do need and those will come with time as I start ordering and collecting parts for it. I plan on starting to order some of the bigger stuff pretty soon. A lot of the stuff is pretty major stuff like the pistons, rods, block, transmission, drive shaft, or I have the transmission, the drive shaft like some stuff like that, but a lot of it's just little stuff. So this is just sort of a starting point for the motor build for you guys who want to follow the full build like all the way through and know exactly what parts I used. This wasn't a very entertaining video, but for those of you guys who are planning a high horsepower build with an M52 or an S52 or like an S50, this is sort of how I'm starting the turbo build motor for it. So. I hope some of you guys enjoyed this. I will update you guys as I get parts and we're gonna cross them off the list until we have everything done then we'll start building the freaking car. So it'll be sick. Thank you guys so much for watching. Keep it fresh and I will see you guys later.